growing up in Rwanda as a kid, we were, we were called Inyenzi, our two, it, that's a Rwandese word for cockroach. And it, it, I remember as a kid, I'd go to school and they would ask all the Tutsi students to stand up. And of course, we were the minority. And so out of 20 kids, a handful of kids would stand up, including me. And the teacher would begin to just say things about us that were so terrible and blame us for everything that was wrong with the country and, and demean us in front of all the other students. And this is how we grew up hearing these things from on television, on radio, and newspapers, that we were cockroaches, animals, subhuman. To be exterminated. To be exterminated. And so my parents, I'd come home every day and they would instill this truth that you are a child of God. And if you're a child of God, you're no less than the Hutu, just because you're Tutsi, you're no less than those in the West, just because you're African. You are a child of God and you're royalty. And that's what really saved and preserved our life because at, at best, I would have had an inferior, inferiority complex. At worst, we would have been dead. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have written this, it's a little book, but it is loaded. The history mm -hmm. is amazing. The supernatural is so inspiring. Yeah. Clearing the brush? Yes. Yeah, that's what, that's what they called it, clearing the brush work. Um, you know, she was five years old in the 50s when she watched her house being burned down and um, her, everything she knew just went right up into the fire. Um, now her dad and her mom, they, they had, she had nine siblings. So 10 kids, her mom and her dad had to rush to live in caves uh, to survive. And uh, they were later moved to refugee camps where it was just terrible. I mean, the refugee camps we see today is one thing. Back then it was even worse. People dying every day um, from state-sponsored killing. Mm. But even at a young age, she, she, she just learned to rely on hope. And she didn't know, she didn't know Jesus then but she had heard something and she said this simple prayer in the midst of the refugee camp where she said every single day, the friends that I would play with the next day wouldn't be there because malaria or some other disease would have taken them. And so she said this very simple prayer. She said, God, I, I think you're real. I've heard you're real. And I've heard that if, you, if I pray to you, then you will send your guardian angel. So I'm asking you that you would not, that you would make sure that none of my family gets killed. And all of them survived for the entirety of that time when they were in those refugee camps. And that's when she knew that there was a God in the midst of this, of this terrible, terrible disaster. She was 10 when she prayed that prayer. That's right, Seeking yes. a guardian angel. And that prayer would mark every chapter of the journey really throughout her life. Yes. Forgiveness probably is the banner theme of your mother's testimony. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's what she wanted most for all of you. Yes. She was confronted by the man who betrayed your father, mm -hmm. a neighbor. Yes. Your father died because of his exposing him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what did your mother do when that moment came? Well, it, it was, and he, he was more than, a, more than a neighbor. He was a neighbor. He was also a colleague of my dad. My dad being a, a pastor, he worked as a clergy with him. And that's how terrible the event was mm. and how tribalism even affected into the church at that time. And um, he, my, my dad had survived up, up until the end of the genocide. And he would go out hiding in his church. He would go and rescue as many people as possible, hide them, stack them. And one day he was out looking for more people on his bicycle. And uh, that's when he was spotted. And they called the Inera Hamge, which was the killing arm of the genocide. And they, by the way, were trained by the army to kill 1,000 Tutsis in 20 minutes. In 20 minutes. In 20 minutes. Yeah, and not conventional warfare as well. They, uh, whether it's clubs or machetes or any household thing that would, anything that would cause more harm. Um, the events are terrible. Um, and so they, they came for my dad. And, uh, and they lined him up and um, they went on killing each person that he had rescued and finally got to him. And, and just with his eyewitnesses tell us it was just as calm and as peace, they, they killed him. And so later on, this person who had orchestrated his murder showed up at my doorstep. By then we were living in, in Kenya and uh, my mom opened the door and saw this man who had taken his, her, her husband's life. And I said to her, mom, what did you do? Did you, she told me this afterwards, what did you do? Did you slap him? Tell me you did something. And he said, no, I had, I had forgiven him, Chris. And, and that really helped me in, in forgiving, in forgiving that man, in forgiving, for, in forgiving everything, everyone for what they had done. You would never 
know where he was buried or any of those details, but a, another supernatural incident, mm. a vision. Yes. Uh, someone in England mm -hmm. had this vision that became the message Yes. To your family about yes, your dad. Absolutely. It was a church in, in Bristol um, that my dad had done his seminary under. And uh, during the genocide, they were praying for us and they had this big image blown up in their church and every day they would be praying for us. And one of the ladies there had a vision of my, my father, my dad, and he was kneeling down surrounded by this murderous horde of people who were trying to break through to kill him, but they were somehow kept back. And on top of my dad was this beautiful, massive angel was placing a crown on my dad's head. And that's how we knew he had passed away. Mm -hmm. And it, the last image was not of my father hacked to death or somewhere in some pit. It was him graduating to heaven. Mm -hmm. And for us, it was, it was, I mean, that's what more could you ask for? This is a book that is, uh, there are places that are pretty hard to read mm -hmm. because it's raw reality, but it's also illuminating spirituality mm -hmm. that you would never expect to find in the midst of some something so dark, mm -hmm. so evil. Is something overwhelming you with fear and anxiety today? You know who Brother Lawrence is? We're going back to the 1600s. <laughs> he said, for my part, I keep myself retired with him in the depth of center of my soul as much as I can. Wow. And while I am so with him, I fear nothing. It's possible. It, you want to read about it? We were royal refugees. Mm -hmm. All the details, the whole journey. God bless you in your life and ministry and thank you for this encouragement. Your family has shown us it's possible. Yeah. Give it all to Jesus. Thank you, Mara. Thank you. Mm -hmm.